All right, going to do a video called The Sin of Self-Righteousness, showing that self-righteousness is a wicked sin. And self-righteousness, when you really get down to it, self-righteousness is the big sin that keeps people from getting saved. Because a prideful, self-righteous person, like an atheist, for example, doesn't want to admit that they are not a good person, and that they're a wicked, rotten sinner in the eyes of God. And that their righteousness are as filthy rags, Isaiah 64, verse 6 and that they were born and shaped in a sin. You can read about that in Psalm 51, verse 5. And there's many other scriptures too, like Ecclesiastes 7:20, which say, it is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So they don't want to come down and basically get rid of their self-righteousness and admit that they're a sinner and get saved. So self-righteousness is the big deadly sin and pride as well, which goes hand in hand. That keeps lost people from getting saved and keeps saved people from getting right with God and admitting they're wrong. So I'm going to go through some scriptures on that, uh, showing that self-righteousness is a very wicked sin, and that it keeps people from getting saved. First, turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. For they, talking about the Jews, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. What were the Jews doing in this passage? Paul was saying he had a heavy burden for them because they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They're self-righteous. They're trying to establish their own righteousness rather than submit to the righteousness of God. Their self-righteousness was stopping them from getting saved. It's a deadly sin. If they were they were not submitting to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They were trying to keep the law and try to establish their self-righteousness and try, try to somehow earn salvation that way. It's a... Uh, it condemns you to hell, self-righteousness. It keeps you from admitting you're a sinner and that your only hope is in Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do to try to merit your salvation. That's that's Calvinism. That's that's you know Augustinianism. It's Catholicism. That's all it is. It's wicked. It's what the Catholic Church is. What Calvinism. It's what you know Islam, Hinduism, every false religion out there teaches that you have to merit salvation by your works. Next, turn to Romans chapter three, verse twenty-one to twenty-eight. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, uh, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness that he might for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the, deeds of the law. Okay, you compare that to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. You know, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Okay? You have verse 27, where is boasting then? Is it, a, you know, is it, is it by works? Paraphrasing, of course. But you see, if you're saved by works, if you're saved by your self-righteousness, you can boast. You can be, well, look how good I am. Look at me. But where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. It's not by your works, because it was, you could boast about your self-righteousness which is what a Pharisee would do. You read about that in the parable in Luke 18, verse 9 to 14. So your works and your self-righteousness don't save you because you can't boast in the eyes of God. You can't say, well, look how good I am. Because Revelation 15, 4 is clear. God is the only one that is holy. Same thing with, uh, you read about that in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. Next, turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16 to 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, 
if, sorry, if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also <clears throat> are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Uh, for the I though, I, for the for through the law, uh, through I sorry for I through the law, not good at reading on a computer. Uh, I am dead to the law that I may live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the flesh of the Son. I live by the faith, sorry, of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if by if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You see, if you're saved by keeping the law, if you're saved by the works of the law, then Christ died for no reason. He died in vain, because he fulfilled the law. Okay, Luke 24, verses 44 to 47, he fulfilled the law. But if you're saved by keeping the law, he died in vain. Okay, another good scripture on that is um, Acts chapter 13, verses, I believe it's 38 to 39. talks about how, you know, you're not justified by the works of the law of Moses. You're not justified by, the, by keeping the law of Moses. You can read about, again, Acts chapter 13, verses 38 to 39. Keeping the law, the works of the law won't save you. You see, again, you can read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 to 25. The keeping the law was self-righteousness. But we're not saved by that today. Next, turn to Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debt debtor to the whole to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Uh, for we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Okay, and of course, verse 4 is a common verse that the conditional security heretics will like to rip out of context and say, see, you can fall from grace. Uh, read it in context. Paul is saying that if you're trying to keep the law, then Christ died for no reason. So if you're trying to keep the law for your salvation, then you're no longer un under God's grace. That's what he's saying there. Again, compare with Galatians 2.21. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So in context of verse 4, Paul is saying that if you're trying to keep the law, which is what's going on in context, if you're trying to keep the law to be saved, then Christ died for no reason. You're, you're falling from God's grace. You're no longer under God's grace. I mean, Romans 11.6 and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8-9 to is clear that God's grace is not, not obtained by your works, by your self-righteousness. So if you are trying to keep the law, then in that sense, you're no longer under God's grace. You're under the, the bondage of the law. So that's what Paul's saying there. But you try to keep the law, you're falling from grace. Christ died for no reason. That. That's why he's saying Christ has become of no effect unto you. Because they're trying to keep, they're thinking they're having to go back under the law. That's what's going on there in context. So another good kick at self-righteousness. Paul is actually rebuking what these uh, works righteous conditional security heretics, these Calvinists, these, these Papists, these Augustinians in the conditional security camp are trying to say. Next, turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, to righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made comfortable, uh, may, and be made comfortable unto his death. Okay? Not having my own righteousness. Again, you can read in Romans uh, 10 verse 4, the law was self-righteousness. And again, you see Deuteronomy 6 verses 24 25, keeping the law of self-righteousness, but not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, like Paul talks about in verse 9. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. A good verse about imputed righteousness that I covered in my ver video about imputed righteousness. Your righteousness is by the faith of Jesus Christ, not by your self-righteousness or keeping the law. That's what Paul's saying here. Now, finally, turn to Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 7. The strongest scripture against the sin of self-righteousness. Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. 
But after that, after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed abun on us abundantly through Jesus, for, through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's where I'm going to end it off right there. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, not by my own righteousness, which is of the law, but by Jesus Christ. You know, by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That was Titus 3, verses 3 to 7. And you can't save yourself by your self-righteousness. It's not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. You're trying to, if you're trying to establish your own righteousness, instead of submit to the righteousness of God, you're going to do a nosedive right into hell. It's that simple. Because uh, it comes down to pride. And what does uh, James 4, 6 and 1 Peter 5, 5 say? God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It's that simple. Self-righteousness is a very wicked, deadly sin. It's the main sin that causes people, atheists, Hindus, Muslims, Papists, Calvinists, you know, Talmudic Jews, anyone, causes them to go to hell because they don't want to give up that self-righteousness and self-righteous pride. So it is a wicked sin. And don't be deceived by those who say, oh, we're saved by works. It's not, okay? Salvation is not by works because then you can boast. So anyway... May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.